I have chronic migraines and one of my biggest triggers is light. As you can imagine, this can make it difficult to use any kind of LCD or OLED screen. But what you may not know is that some are easier on your eyes and head than others. In this video, I'm gonna show you what PWM Flicker looks like, how you can detect it yourself, and how you can easily find headache and migraine friendly laptops and smartphones. If you're already familiar with PWM and you wanna skip ahead, there are timestamps in the comment section below. For those who don't know, PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation, and it's basically a way to supply power to, in our case, an LCD or OLED screen. Unlike an analog signal that has degrees of intensity, a digital signal only has on or off. So in order for an OLED screen to achieve 40% brightness, it would have to be off 60% of the time and on 40% of the time. But it does this very rapidly, most of the time at a speed in which you're not even consciously aware. This on-off frequency is expressed in hertz, or number of times per second. Even though you may not be aware of it, PWM flicker can still result in eye strain, headaches, and if you're lucky like me, migraines. If you'd like to read more on PWM and why it can be such a nuisance, Notebook Check has a great article which I'll link in the description box below. To give you an example, this is PWM Flickr I recorded on my Samsung HDTV at 60 frames per second with a shutter speed of 1 500th of a second. Really speeding up the shutter like I did here can make PWM Flickr very obvious. So how do you test for it yourself? All you really need is a smartphone or camera, ideally one that can record video at at least 60 frames per second with an adjustable shutter speed. The faster the frame rate, the more likely and easier it will be to see PWM Flickr. We're shooting for a frame rate of at least 60 because there is always the chance that the frame rate would be in perfect sync with the PWM frequency. If this were to happen, you wouldn't see any flicker on the camera. If you've seen the video of the helicopter that appears to be floating in midair, it's the same idea. The camera's frame rate and shutter line up perfectly with the helicopter's rotor creating this illusion. Most smartphones these days have a manual or pro mode that should let you play around with those options. Even if your phone doesn't have that, you may still be able to detect PWM flicker. Adjusting the shutter speed will just affect motion blur, making the flicker more or less obvious. For example, here's my Samsung TV again at 60 frames per second, but the shutter speed has been slowed down all the way to 1 60th of a second. You can see how less obvious the flicker is now. Okay, so now we know what PWM flicker looks like and how to detect it ourselves. Great, but how do we avoid it when purchasing a new laptop or smartphone? Thankfully, notebookcheck.net and their extensive reviews have made it super easy to buy headache and migraine friendly laptops and smartphones. This video is not sponsored by them, but honestly, I've kind of fallen in love with their website just because of how helpful it's been. They test every phone and laptop they review for PWM Flickr, and they also give us a minimum brightness recording as well. Two super important things for headache or light sensitive individuals like myself. The only thing they don't test for is the contrast ratio when that brightness is dropped, which is unfortunate because if the contrast ratio is really low, it could be difficult to see finer detail but you can't have everything and it is essentially a free service, so I'm not complaining too much. So now we know what we're looking for. We want a device that doesn't use pulse width modulation to power its screen and a low minimum brightness. How low you'll want that minimum to be will depend on your own individual sensitivity. For me personally, since I'm super sensitive, I shoot for a minimum of around five or six nits of brightness. But I suspect most will probably be content with a minimum of around 10 or 15 nits. It's going to vary from person to person. The same is true for PWM Flicker. Again, I'm super sensitive and can't handle any. Some of you may find that you tolerate the higher frequencies better than the lower. Also, keep in mind, it's not always a yes or no type deal. It's not uncommon for a screen to be a hybrid and only use PWM when that brightness is dropped. Let's move on to the website and I'll briefly show you how to use their benchmark tool. So we're on notebookcheck.net and the first thing you wanna do is come up here and select the benchmarks and tech tab. I'll click on that. We're gonna scroll down to benchmarks and test results. Now they do already have a PWM ranking set up for us, but I wanna show you how to use the restrictions tool so you can kind of tinker with it yourself. So for now, we're just gonna select benchmarks and test results. And this rectangle, this box here is sort of what we're gonna be messing with. So let's say we want the minimum brightness for every device that Notebook Check has reviewed or has a record for. So we're gonna leave Notebook Class 
the same, not restricted. I'm gonna leave that blank because we wanna see all of them. Um, show only items with known benchmarks results. We're gonna check that. We don't care whether or not it's archived, so we're gonna uncheck that. Um, and let's make make the max results 50,000 because again, we wanna see all of them. And I'm gonna also add screen size, screen resolution, and screen type. Um, and we also wanna see days old because we'd like to know how new or how old the device slash review is. And then we're just gonna come down to the restrict benchmarks list here and select brightness minimum. And then we're gonna hit restrict. And it's probably gonna take a few seconds because it's accessing the entire database, which is a lot of information. Okay, great. So this is what it has returned and it's currently sorted by the most recent first. Um, and all these, all the categories or columns, I should say, you can sort them just by clicking on them. So if we want the, if we want them sorted by brightness minimum, we would just click on that. And now it gives us the brightness minimums from the low all the way to the very end. It's still loading. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you get the picture. So we have the minimum brightness. Now all we need is the PWM frequency. And there are a couple ways to get that. The longer, more difficult way, I would say, uh, would be to come back up to the restrict benchmarks list. And we're just gonna type in PWM, select that, and then we would hit restrict and that would give us the PWM frequency of every device that they have reviewed or have a record for. But the easier way would be to just click on the model here. So let's say we're interested in the, the, the Lenovo Legion Y7000. So we would just click on that and this will take us directly to the review. And then we can just do control F PWM and there's the PWM frequency. So we know that this probably wouldn't be good for headache or migraine sensitive individuals. Although this is 21,000 is a pretty high frequency. So you it, sensitivity is really gonna depend on the person. If we go down even further, we get a, a slightly more detailed look and they even tell us at the exact brightness percentage of when the PWM kicks in. So there is no flicker at 100% brightness, but anything below that, you're gonna get a flicker of roughly 21,000. So that was sort of a more general use of the restrictions tool, but let's say I'm in the market for something more specific. Let's say I want a 17 inch gaming laptop with a high refresh rate screen and one of the newer RTX graphics cards. So I would change the notebook class to gaming. Like I said, I want it to be recent, so let's do past 10 months. Uh, we wanna check show only items with known benchmark results. We don't care whether or not it's archived, so we're gonna uncheck that. Let's make the max results 5,000. It's probably gonna be way less than that, but might as well limit it to that anyway. And we're gonna do screen size, screen resolution, screen type, and days old, because we wanna be able to see how recent it is. And again, we're just gonna select brightness minimum and hit restrict. We're gonna scroll down, and again, it's automatically sorted by days old, but let's sort by brightness minimum. And just for example, let's select the Lenovo Y740 17 inch. Has an RTX graphics cards, I can see the screen size, resolution, and IPS type. That's, that's a good start. So we're gonna click on it and check for the PWM frequency. And it looks like it doesn't use any. Yep, great, PWM not detected. So this would be a great headache and migraine friendly choice. 17 inch laptop with a very low minimum brightness of almost zero, basically. It's essentially the same thing for smartphones. All you would need to do is change the notebook class to smartphone and then select whatever other criteria you wanted. It is worth mentioning that all OLED and AMOLED screens utilize PWM. Given the popularity of these types of screens on smartphones, your choices are going to be more limited here. OLED screens aren't as common on laptops yet, but I suspect they will be soon. So regardless of what you're in the market for, you're going to want an LCD screen, usually IPS. The real beauty of this tool is that new laptops and smartphones are automatically added to the database and benchmark for us. So if we were to check it again in a week or two, 
we would see even more laptops and smartphones already added to the list. Anyway, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up. If you did find this helpful, be sure to show Notebook Check some love by disabling your ad blocker. The reviews are super detailed and I can only imagine how time consuming they must be. I have found a few other websites that measure and record minimum brightness and PWM frequency. They're not as useful as Notebook Check, but they're still a good reference. They are laptopmedia.com and ultrabookreview.com. I'll leave links to these in the description box below as well. One other important thing to note, sometimes laptop manufacturers use more than one screen in the same laptop. A good example of this is MSI's GE75 Raider gaming laptop. They use two separate screens, one made by Chi Mei and one made by AU Uptronics. This can be a big deal because in this particular instance, the panel made by Chi Mei does utilize PWM, while the one made by AU Uptronics does not. It won't always matter though. Just to give you another example real quick, the Lenovo Y740 17-inch gaming laptop also uses two different panels, but they are both flicker free and they both have very low minimum brightnesses. So it's always a good idea to check multiple sources before purchasing. I would also recommend buying from a retailer with a generous return policy, such as Amazon, Walmart, Costco, or Micro Center. Please like and consider sharing this video if you know someone who is prone to headaches, migraines, or even eye strain. Discovering my sensitivity to PWM helped me so much. I can't imagine where I'd be if I wasn't able to use a computer at least some of the time. Anyway, that's gonna do it. I hope you found it helpful. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.